Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Unity Spiritual Community in Citrus Heights, where everyone is welcome and where you are celebrated as the splendor of God's creative expression. We be begin our holiday season today with our annual service of remembrance in which we remember and honor those people who are gone from our lives, but not from our hearts. I invite you to take part in this ceremony today to clear the way for this sacred season of awakening to your own inner light. We join our hearts in prayer this morning as we light our second Advent candle. Last week's candle was lit for hope and for faith, so I'll light that first. And this week's candle we light for peace. is the second Sunday of Advent and the Advent reading for today is the same as the daily word reading and today's daily word is peace. Today's daily word is peace. Peace flows through me and blesses the world. Peace flows through me and blesses the world. The light of God shines within all people. I pause to remember this truth as I consider the world and my relationship to it. Jesus said, peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. That's John 14, 27. The same divine light that lived in Jesus is shine, shining brightly in me. My peace is a gift I choose to give to the world. I bless the world by affirming the kingdom of God is among us here and now. Say that again. The kingdom of God is among us here and now. It is through this Christ-centered awareness that I project a consciousness of peace I live, move, and have my being in the light, love, and peace of God. I expand my awareness of divine ideas through prayer and meditation, and I do my part to uplift the consciousness of the entire planet. I am walking in the light of God, and I am at peace. The scripture to, from, for today is from Revelation 21, 24. The nations will walk by its light, and the kings of the earth will bring their glory into it. And today's daily word is peace. And now I'd like to share with you a song. Um, my son Cameron pre-recorded with this with me last night. Uh, we discovered it's easier to pre-record the song than to deal with all of the technical vagaries of trying to live stream um, different views and things. So um, this is What Child Is This? Here we go. <laughs> A 
Thank you so much to Cameron for all his help. He's just a great blessing as the rest of as is the rest of my family. Christmas crept up on me this year like a sneaky little elf peeking around the corner. While I was still taking in Cal California's beautiful autumn weather and flame-colored leaves, 
I was still reveling in our dropping temperatures after months of enduring heat and firestorms. So I didn't see the usual early Christmas decorations in stores as I wasn't shopping. So my first glimpse of Christmas lights on a house was what clued me in that Christmas season was beginning. When I was a child, uh, we made a regular pilgrimage to church um, every week or about two times a week because my mom was the church pianist. Um, we would count, we would drive to church. It's about a 20 minute drive and we would count how many houses had Christmas lights on that drive. And it was so exciting to go from just a few to um, having all these wonderful displays. And that really, uh, that really showed the progress of the season to me. What do you remember about Christmas from your childhood? I remember lying on the floor on the dark green patterned carpet. It wasn't, or it wasn't a shag rug, it was kind of smooth with patterns. And um, I looking up at the lights on the Christmas tree in my own magical world. I remember playing under the Christmas tree with one of my presents, which was a chatty Kathy doll. She had a, a little pink phone. It was hot pink and she could hold it and talk. And she talked to me on my own pink plastic phone. I always wondered why they were different colors of pink, but you know, that's just a kid's brain, I guess. So at first we had big, beautiful colored lights on the tree. And I remember when we added the twinkly white lights and how pretty that was. Gramps and Grandma Lee would come over on Christmas Eve and Gramps would read the story of Jesus' birth in his gentle, quiet voice. And then, oh, the presents. Imagine three little girls with handmade doll beds and handmade, Grandma's handmade uh, flowered sheets for the doll beds and identical Raggedy Ann dolls with different colored dresses. And later on, I joined my husband Michael's family in a marathon tradition. They would have dinner followed by a full length program and often go from house to house. And in this program, everyone had to play a part, whether it was singing a song or reading a poem. So um, you know, this is about 18 people. And then we would each watch each person open their gift one at a time as we each drew a name for, for each other. So you can imagine that went on until, I don't know, 10 or 11 at night. <laughs> it was something. But that is all gone now. And many of those people are gone and Christmas is different. Some of us have fresh and present grief for those we've lost in the last year or two, or the returning breath robbing grief that strikes even after many years of loss. How will it ever be the same? How can we have that sweetness and joy when we have such pain? This year we have the added grief of not being able to do Christmas in the regular way. Not seeing family, not going to concerts, not producing concerts, not singing together, not going to physical church, not giving hugs. We have the anxiety about of hearing about people who are ill, who need food. And we have a grave concern for all of our healthcare workers. I think we were all hoping that it wouldn't be that bad that we'd be able to see our loved ones without worrying this year. But we want to be safe 
and it's not to be. For those of us who have recent grief from the loss of a loved one, we've learned that life is always changing. One of life's great lessons is that growing older, we live every day with grief. It becomes part of the fabric of our lives, but so does grace. Here's a quote I found online in a blog by Crystal Johnson. She says, you can't schedule grief. It ebbs and it flows and creates tidal waves that knock you on your rear when you least expect it. Today, I've managed to tumble through the current, gasp for breath and claw my way into this tiny little boat of grace. The waters are still raging, but for now, I'm breathing the salt-filled air. My first experience of deep, life-changing grief was when I had a late-term miscarriage. And more recently, the loss of my mother-in-law, Carolyn, rocked my world. Nothing is the same. How is it possible to go on? I, I want it back. I want that world back that was so comfortable and comforting. So now it's been about two years since Carolyn died just after Christmas of pancreatic cancer. And Carolyn hosted Christmas that year, even though it almost killed her. She did let us wash the dishes, though. So what I've learned in those last two years is that all of it was a gift. Every precious moment, every precious memory is still there inside me. And I can go there. I can treasure the feelings the colors, and the impressions. I can sit and re-experience the memory of the exquisitely set table with placemats and candles and the centerpiece just so. Music playing, people laughing as they arrive and embrace. And now, so because those experiences are now part of me, if I can remember them and treasure them, I can also bring them to life. Because there are others to love, even on Zoom, you guys. And I have these experiences and I can share them. So that's for me, I can share them with my kids and my community as I step into the role of wise elder that my grandparents and my parents filled so well for me. Maybe for you it wasn't your parents or your grandparents, but we all have those people, those mentors, those friends in our lives whom we miss, whom, for whom we grieve and for whom, whether they're living or past, we, uh, we still grieve the loss of those relationships and we carry those with us. But it's a letting go as well as a cherishing and nothing in life will ever remain the same. Even the idea of trying to keep things remaining the same changes things. I think that's quantum physics. And we have to let go of having a regular Christmas this year. So how do we do this? Well, first we need to sit in our grief. Allow yourself to be sad. Recognize your losses. For some of us, it's very clear that there was a deep, tragic loss of a person in our lives. And I acknowledge you right now, and I see, I feel your pain. 
but we also need to recognize the seemingly smaller losses. The loss of smiling at a stranger in a grocery store. The loss of walking easily and confidently through a crowded mall to pick up a last minute Christmas gift. The loss of sitting shoulder to shoulder watching skaters at an out outdoor ice rink. We need to feel our pain both individually and collectively and to sit and draw it into our hearts in prayer as we express our deep pain to God, to ourselves, to each other, to our loved ones. We allow that pain to flow from us into the deep heart of God. And as we are washed clean through tears, we open to the memories. Because our memories are gifts. And we may now open to our own expression of these gifts this Christmas. As we are able, as the time is right, we allow these treasured memories to well up and to flow as gifts to others. You are the light of the world. That light gifted to you is your greatest blessing. Gather all of that light that you've re received in your lifetime and treasure it in your heart and begin to open as your heart, bursting with light, illumines all those around you. We're going to have a chance to go through this process together this morning. But before we do that, I'd like to share this beautiful song with you called Gone from my sight. I stand at the seashore, a ship at my side, spreading her sails as they billow out wide. She starts on her journey across the indigo ocean. She is an object of beauty and strength. I stand and I watch her until at length she stands like a speck, like a fly, barely in motion. Someone beside me says that she is gone, but I know that without a doubt they are That song, her heart still as large and her mouth still as tall. She's gone somewhere, not vanished in air. The clouds only cover her light. She's so Till there's nothing left But a speck, but a dot But a haze I can't see anymore Her seeming smallness is me 
that's not her. Her sails are as mighty as they ever were, and she's bearing her load and her life to some distant shore. Just as someone besides me shouts there, she has gone, and their voices are ready to shout. Here she comes. We're going to move now into a time of meditation. So I invite you now to find a comfortable position and relax deeply into your seat or your bed. And let your feet sink into the floor. Sink into your chair. Breathe into this moment. Let your external thoughts relax now. Breathe again. Let your shoulders just drop. Your thighs relax, your belly soften, feel your arms drop, your neck just wobble a little bit and your throat soften. Let your scalp and your face relax. And let any concerns you may be carrying go for this moment. See them floating away and drifting easily around you. You can pick them up later. For now, just let them go. Breathe again. And begin to check in with yourself. Where are you holding tension? Find that spot in your body. Are you feeling any pain? Just sit with that for a moment. Just acknowledge that place of pain. It's there for a reason. You don't even have to know the reason. Just be gentle with yourself. 
And now I'd like you to slowly breathe into that pain or that tension. And as you release, let the pain go. Let it go. Love it. Love it. And let it go. Let's sit here for a moment. And now I'd like you to begin to imagine one lovely memory. It may be a memory of the person you've lost, who loved you, who you loved. It may be a memory from a Christmas past. And sit here for a moment as you imagine Fill out the feeling of that memory. Now I'd like you to hold your memory here, cup it in your hands. Go ahead and do that. Cup your hands in front of you. What is the gift of this memory? What is the essence of the memory? Feel the essence now. This essence of this memory is yours. It's part of you. It's your gift to this world. Now I want you to take this essence in your hands and holding it in front of you, open your hands to let this essence express into the world. Now we draw our hands back together as we give thanks for that which is ours, given to us and ours to share. And so it is. Amen. And let's begin to come out of our meditation. You may want to rub your hands gently together to return to this moment in time. You may want to stretch a little bit. Draw a breath. Deepen your breathing, wobble your head just a little bit. You may want to stretch. As we, we return to this place in time, now together. And what I'd like to do is I'd like to have us share our gifts with each other. We, uh, we can do this in the chat. So um, if you're able to on your device, I don't know if you have a computer or a phone. I'm not sure exactly how to access chat on the phone. It's probably possible. But 
if you're able to do this, please um, go ahead and t type in the chat the name of the person you're releasing or whatever it is that you're releasing. And then also what the essence is of the gift that you have received. And I'm going to do this first. I'm going to go ahead and type my mother-in-law's name, Carolyn. And I'm going to type in um, laughter and loving generosity. Can you guys see that in the chat? Okay, can anybody else type a name or whatever it is that you may be releasing? It may be an experience, something that you are grieving, releasing, and your um, and the essence of what the gift is. Oh, one second. Okay, Ashley, I'm releasing expectations. Freedom is the essence. Wow. Mike, I'm releasing any negativity. Okay. And if you have an essence of a gift, maybe we could say your gift is positivity. So your denial is you're denying any negativity and your affirmation is positivity. Brian is releasing is releasing Nancy, the gift of Nancy was sister partners in horses. Oh, that's wonderful. Thank you. Sydney, releasing all the people I've loved who are gone from my life. They are still in the oneness of my love and not gone. Love is the essence. So thank you all um, for participating in that. I just love that we can do this in the chat. And now we acknowledge all of these names and all of these experiences. And I know that there are people on Facebook or watching later who also um, have loved ones or experiences um, that have provided us with a gift. And we draw all those names into this place and we acknowledge and bless all of those names and all of you and the essence that you claim now. We open our hearts together, and as we release, we joyfully embrace the gifts we have received. Now, in closing, I would like to share with you a beautiful poem entitled The First Snowfall by James Russell Lowell. And Reverend Carla shared with me that this is one of her mother's favorite poems. The snow had begun in the gloaming, and busily all the night had been heaping field and highway with a silence deep and white. Every pine and fir and hemlock wore ermine too dear for an earl, and the poorest twig on the elm tree was ridged inch deep with pearl. From sheds, new roofed with Carrera, came Chanticleer's muffled crow. The stiff rails were softened to swan's down and still fluttered down the snow. I stood and watched by the window the noiseless work of the sky and the sudden flurries of snowbirds like brown leaves whirling by. I thought of a mound in sweet Auburn where a little headstone stood, how the flakes were folding it gently, as did robins, the babes in the wood. Up spoke our li own little Mabel, saying, Father, who makes it snow? And I told of the all good All-Father who cares for us here below. Again I looked at the snowfall and thought of the leaden sky, that arched o'er our first great sorrow when that mound was heaped so high. I remembered the gradual patience that fell from that cloud-like snow, flake by flake, healing and hiding, the scar of our deep plunged woe. And again to the child I whispered, 
the snow that husheth, husheth all, darling, the merciful Father alone can make it fall. Then, with eyes that saw not, I kissed her, and she, kissing back, could not know that my kiss was given to her sister, folded close under deepening snow. And now we will close this ceremony in song.
So now uh, we prepare for our time of offerings, love offerings. So I'm going to share again. And I'm going to go back. So now let us join together in affirming this prosperity affirmation by Charles Fillmore, the co founder of Unity. Together, infinite wisdom guides us, divine love prospers us, and we are successful in everything we undertake. Now, since we've gone online, our um, expenses are just slightly reduced because um, we don't have to pay for setup or for the community center. So um, we have been so grateful for your continuing support through this time as our expenses are ongoing. But I just wanted to remind you that we do count on the regularity of your offerings to sustain this ministry. And um, I know that some sometimes it seems that in this time, because we're not regularly going to church, um, you know, some, sometimes we forget about making our offering. So I want to um, we let you know that we continue, we appreciate your continuing to make weekly offerings. And I encourage you to do this even during the offering time in the service when you may go to our, um, you can write your check or you can find the donate button on our website, which is unitycitrusheights.org or in the email that we send out every week. You can use PayPal, which includes just using a credit card if you want to for that or a debit card. So um, thank you to all of you for your continuing support. We are so grateful. And now we bless our offerings together, knowing that divine love flowing through us blesses and multiplies all that we are, all that we have, all that we choose to give, and all that we are open to receive. And so it is. Amen. So we just have a few announcements. And first of all, um, we have collected already $72 in our project in our collection for Project Heifer, and that is our Christmas outreach, which actually began with collecting coins at Lent. So if you have collected coins, we would like you to, um, if you can, if you're going to the grocery store or your bank, or you know how much change you've collected, um, if you could convert that into, so that you can make an, an offering online or by mail, um, and please do market Project Heifer so that we know that that is um, intended for that social outreach. We will pick something next week after the service on Zoom. And um, from the Project Heifer catalog, sometimes it's uh, bees, sometimes it's um, uh, uh, geese, uh, whatever we want to choose with the money that we have collected for um, reaching out to the world in this way. And everyone is welcome to attend that meeting to just be brief to decide what we 
want to give to Project Heifer. Um, the only other announcement was that our holiday service calendar was sent out in our newsletter yesterday. So I'm hoping you got that. If um, it was Friday night, so if it didn't, if you didn't receive it, do check your spam or your junk mail because you know things that you get regularly like that. Sometimes you just have they'll go in there even though you've received them in the past. Um, and you'll notice that we are having a candle lighting service um, and a water bowl ceremony. That'll be in place of the burning bowl ceremony so that you don't all have to have fires in your house and a white stone service. And we're also, because there's a service between Christmas and New Year's, um, we're having a winter solstice ceremony online in lieu of meeting in person for that. That's gonna be one of our Sunday services. So if you are planning to attend these services via Zoom and would like the supplies for them to be mailed to you, uh, please send us your address at info at unitycitrusheights.org. Um, so I believe that all of you who are on Zoom today should be attending, should be receiving those packages already. Um, and Brian, you see the people who are here. Brian's in charge of that. So um, anyone else who is watching on YouTube or Facebook and would like the supplies, please do let us know. All right, and now um, we're going to end the service with our prayer for protection. So rather than putting the words up, I realize that we cannot see the words and also um, do our holding hands. So um, we, let's just go ahead, and most of us know the prayer for protection. So we're going to go ahead and hold hands in Zoom like this. And so um, together, let's say, the light of God surrounds us, the love of God enfolds us, the power of God protects us, the presence of God watches over us wherever we are. God is and all is well. And so it is. Amen. I'm going to close with our songs, but please do stay for our um, after service Zoom chat and let us know how you're doing in this time. I know there's a lot going on right now. I'd love to hear from you. We together weave us together in unity and love we weave, weave us together weave us together together and let there be peace on earth and let it begin with me let there be peace on earth the peace that was meant to be with God as creator. Family all are we. Let us walk with each other in perfect harmony. Let peace begin with me. Let this be the We did the prayer for fair protection out of order. That's okay, though. So we're going to have a good time, good thing here. We've got a good thing going on around here. We got a good thing going on around here. You can see it on each and every face. There's a sweet, sweet spirit. We 
got a good thing going on around here. We got a good thing going on. We got a good thing going on. We got a good thing going on. We got a good thing going on.